Hello everyone, I am Deeksha Jain and I cleared uh, Civil Services 2018 exam with the uh, 22nd rank and my optional was English Literature. In this video, I will be talking about uh, in detail about how I prepared for the optional and what all one has to do to clear this exam with English Literature. Okay, so the first thing that I want to uh, go to is the sources and the books to refer for this optional. Uh, before doing any books, what I feel is important is to read previous year question papers related to the core texts. Now, once you read the previous year question papers, you will have an idea about what kind of questions UPSC tends to ask in English literature. For this, uh, after reading the question paper, uh, these are the sources that I refer to and which you, I feel also one should refer. The first and the most, most important uh, source is the core text. Uh, in English literature, we have dramas, poetry and novels and background topics. Uh, for the dramas, you have to read the original play. Uh, for If you have any difficulty in reading Shakespeare because the language is a little archaic, you can also go for online sources like No Fear Shakespeare to see the exact translation so that it is better for you to understand the play. Apart from that, poetry, novels, you have to read the core text and that is very, very important. While you are reading the text, Please make sure that the previous year question papers that you read about that text, you keep those in mind. Because then uh, when you read the text, you will know what are the important parts of the text which you should keep in mind. What is your own analysis of the text based on the questions that UPSC tends to ask. Okay, uh, after the core texts are done and 70% of the preparation is just the core text. I would even say 80%. Everything else is, I mean, uh, addition to this. Uh, for the background topics, uh, what I did was just Google. So we have background topics like the Elizabethan age or the Jacobian drama. So for this, what you can do is you can just Google these words and uh, you will find multiple sources like uh, your spark notes and you will also find some uh, more literary sources. Just note down 5-10 points about that particular topic and you are good to go. It will be a 10 marker question and if you are able to put in all those paragraphs and with evidence from the text related to that background topic, then you are good to go, you will get good marks in that answer. Okay, now the second source uh, that I personally found uh, helpful was introductions to the text. Whenever you buy these texts, there will be uh, different editions. Uh, for uh, however many texts you can find a worldview edition, it is very good. The introduction is usually very well written. So uh, what happens, And but other introductions are also fine. When you read an introduction, it is usually a person who has done some research on the text and they write about all the aspects of the text in that introduction. So it will give you a good overview. You can also collect critical comments from that introduction. So it is not necessary that you will find an introduction for every text, but for many you will find and for those texts it will be very useful. Okay, now after the introduction, um, in introduction one uh, example that I would like to give, now the foreword to Kantapura written by Raja Rao, it is brilliant for that text because it is uh, it has all the themes of the text and it has very beautiful quotations also that you can use in the answer and it is very short, it is just one and a half uh, pages. So uh, it's not a proper introduction but then it is very useful. So introduction, foreword by the author, all these things you should pay attention to. Okay. After that, uh, you can go for online sources. Uh, in online sources, uh, what you uh, can do is you don't have to go too much in detail. So what happens is that when we read a text, there will be certain analysis and understanding that we will have and that will be the core of our answer. But many times we uh, sort of feel that in a particular area, our understanding is lacking. For example, um, uh, maybe I might feel that in Pride and Prejudice, if I were to get the question that I need to do a feminist analysis of the text, I might feel that I don't have enough number of points or I don't, uh, I still am trying to understand the text. In such cases, you can just type this feminist reading of uh, Pride and Prejudice. You can go to online sources like Lit Charts, Spark Notes, and even more literary uh, sources like JSTOR, and uh, you might find some scholarly articles. Don't spend too much time on it. Just give it one day, four, five hours. Uh, note down whatever you can from these articles if it is useful. Build your understanding and then leave it. Whatever notes of like one, one and a half pages that you have made is all you are going to require from that. Okay, after the online sources, um, one more thing I would like to say is that in uh, 
going to the introduction uh, there are not in editions of text also and the introduction is very very heavy it is the introduction itself is 50 to 80 pages so uh, please don't go that much in depth what UPSC requires is your understanding first and after that if you give a little bit of uh, you know critical comments it's all right and secondly you won't have the time in UPSC preparation to go into so much depth of every text so I would say that if you find that something is too lengthy then avoid it but if the text is too lengthy you can't avoid it the core text has to be read it is a compulsory thing okay uh, one more source is IGNO material uh, so what I uh, found was uh, that Indira Gandhi Open Institute of Learning uh, for ME it has many texts which are there in the English literature optional so uh, for some in which I was looking for some content for Pride and Prejudice for example I was looking for some content so I went to their website I downloaded the PDF I went through it I made little notes from it and that was it it helped me in sort of enhancing my answers so I found that material to be decent it is not very good but then decent will get you decent marks in UPSC also now all our uh, sources are done now we are talking about the preparation strategy how to go about the preparation of this paper now how I went was first was to read the previous year questions then read the core text the core text is very very important so uh, when you're reading the text I would always do this whichever quotation I think is useful and important I used to note it down to be used in answers uh, for example uh, so in Milton's Pride and Prejudice if there is a question that uh, do a psychoanalytical reading of Pride and Prejudice and if you start your answer or if you use this quotation in the uh, answer uh, from, Paradi from Paradise Lost itself uh, that the mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell or a hell of heaven this is the core uh, way in which you can understand hell and heaven as the states of mind so this quotation will be very impactful so look out for such quotations which are relevant to the answers and which are which personally you feel that these are beautiful quotations and when you use them it will put a smile on the examiner's face and it will it will indeed it will fetch, fetch you extra marks okay second thing is so whenever you google around please don't go too much in detail what i used to do was after reading the text i would just do a general uh, i would go to lit charts i would uh, see if there is uh, somewhere where i'm lacking depth i would go and google those things i did not you know compulsively google everything about every text because that is not required wherever you feel that preparation is required there you use online sources more if you feel that the introduction that you have read or the understanding that you have is enough then it is perfectly fine okay now third thing is answer writing answer writing is the most important thing generally for UPSC mains but also for UPSC optional paper in English literature uh, how do you practice answer writing firstly please use previous year questions to practice answer writing because the major themes that are asked in UPSC are the same they are being repeated because uh, there are four or five themes for each text and only they keep getting asked in a cyclical manner so the more you practice the more you will be prepared for the questions which will come in the exam okay now uh, I wanted to discuss a little bit in detail about answer writing uh, so okay firstly in answer writing what is important a good introduction and a good conclusion is always important in introduction what you can do is you can begin by a quotation uh, you can begin by your own understanding which is well framed and apt to the question that is being asked because uh, the introduction has to be bang on on the question please don't do this that you uh, in the answer you have just summarized the entire text that this happened and then this happened then she said this to this person because that is not what they are asking they are asking for your analysis so the answer has to be analytical and not uh, a summary based answer Another thing in answer writing is uh, use of quotations as I mentioned earlier the more quotations at least use 3-4 quotations in one answer it will fetch you at least 4-5 extra marks I can tell you that much. In answer writing uh, whenever you make a point uh, whether it is for example uh, if you are making a point that uh, uh, Alexander Pope in um, the rape of the log satirizes the uh, conventions of the society of that time 
then please give evidence of it also and evidence is what evidence is one is quotations from the text two it is incidents from the text also if you don't remember the exact quote you can say that um, um, for example you can say that uh, cutting the lock of belinda was also a satire on the um, on the way uh, women uh, on women and their vanity of uh, during that period of time so that evidence will act as good as a quotation you can use a quotation elsewhere where you remember the exact quote so um, use evidence to back up your point because if you just make a point without evidence then then you'll get no marks for it it will be very vague and very generalized okay a uh, third uh, thing about the answer is that paragraphs should be well connected it is not a gs paper answer that you can just write in point form and uh, just way you know you can't the, the literature answer has to be a cohesive whole you uh, the a person must feel that you know from beginning to end it is one piece and uh, if there is a good answer one does not feel it feels so effortless because you start reading and you end reading and it seems like everything has been said without any effort at all so that is the way you should judge your answer if you feel that your answer is becoming abrupt then try to correct those things try to make it more jointed and more wholesome um okay the next thing is that um, language based in upsc the time allotted for a question is very less i am from an english literature background and we used to write eight sheets like eight sides of a sheet for the same answer in which upsc you will get only four sheets three sheets or even two sheets so the idea is that you have to say all of that but you have to say it in much fewer words so how do we do that uh, first thing is language based you need to use shorter and more direct sentences you can't be talking about uh, in a you know if you can reach a place directly please don't take the zigzag route even though the zigzag route might be more beautiful and more artistic the more uh, direct and the more to the point you are in the answer it will be more impactful and you will be able to say much more in your answer uh in this regard also uh what you can do is that uh, in university what we used to do that for one making one point we would give multiple evidences from the text that if i am saying that um, uh that uh, this um, that elizabeth is a very strong character and then i will give one evidence then two evidence then three evidence just making one point so that increases the length of the answer it also shows that you've read the text well but in upsc that is not required you give one good evidence for one point with this what will happen is that uh, you will be able to include more points you will be able to include uh, di diverse kind of quotations diverse kind of evidences and it will enrich your answer what you were saying in eight sides is it is possible to actually say it in only four sides but it has to be done very meticulously and the only way to get there is to practice the more answer writing you practice the better your answers will become and uh, for this there is a word of caution please practice with a timer you uh, because upsc will give you 7 minutes for a 10 marker i think around 14 minutes for a 20 marker so if you are taking 20 minutes to write a, a 20 marker answer then you will not be able to complete the paper then it will be pointless because other answers which you knew you will not be able to contribute anything to them the idea is that whenever you practice answers practice with a timer even if the quality goes back you practice again and slowly the quality will improve another way of doing it is also that you improve the quality first and then try to crunch it in time but i found the former way to be more useful because then once you get used to writing in a particular amount of time then uh, your mind starts working like that so practicing in a timer is very very important the last thing which i found was uh, important uh, for my preparation was uh, making consolidated notes as i uh, have mentioned earlier also whenever i read a text i used to note down the quotations if i felt that i had a, a different perspective a way of looking at that text then i would also wrote down write down my point of view in that paper apart from that i would also mention if i have read some quotation somewhere some critics comments which i feel could be relevant to the answer something from the introduction or online sources then i would note all these things down in a piece of paper now what this will lead to is a four five sheet um stapled uh, sort of i used to staple them so four five sheets of uh, notes for one text 
two sides for a background topic and these can be easily revised uh, this time we had a seven day break between before the optional paper and i could go through all my notes for all the texts before the exam and i can tell you that really helps because then you feel very refreshed and you feel in control of the exam and uh, it is easier to remember quotations if you've revised them recently so do make consolidated notes it is very useful and uh, it really helped me a lot and uh, I think uh, that's it from my side. I uh, personally, I did not take any classes. There are hardly any classes available for English literature. I did all of this on my own. I also got guidance uh, from my mentor, Mr. Gaurav Garg. He's an IRS officer who also cleared on his own uh, with English literature as a background. So um, it would be good if you can find somebody who can check your answers because then you can get feedback on that. You can talk to college professors, you can talk to previous year people like me or other people who've cleared with English literature. There are many people. So um, it would be good if you can find somebody to correct your answers. And uh, that would be all. It is a great optional to have because the beautiful thing about literature is, uh, number one, it does not feel like studying at all. So if you get bored after four days of studying GS, you can just pick up a novel, you can pick up a poet and you can enjoy yourself and study at the same time. And uh, it is a very beautiful thing. Uh, even to this day, even I don't remember my GS papers that well, but I do remember my literature paper very well because a lot of love and affection has got into it. So uh, I hope you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed giving this paper. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe with us and press the bell icon to never miss the video on Chanakya IAS Academy.